Hi, welcome back to Vela News TV. I'm Neil Rogers here at the start of Stage 15 in Foix with Chris Horner for another installment of the Horner Diaries. Chris, it was great to see you at the bottom of the final climb in the front group yesterday. Looks like you're having a great tour. Uh, I want to hear a little bit about how the day went for you, but also the feeling within the team. I know Cadell lost some time, looked like you blew up there at the top. Uh, what's it like on the bus today, and what's it like rooming with Cadell? Yeah, well, the atmosphere is still really good. Cadell's sitting third. He's only you know, a few seconds out of uh, going to second, so everything's really good there. Yesterday, in general, though, it was just a really hard stage. We started up right away, climbing right, right from the, right the get-go. Group of 27 went over the top with Rasmussen, and so the team chased to pull that back. Did a 10K all-out chase, brought it back. From then on, it was pretty much tempo until we got to the valley of the second to last climb, and then when we were in the valley for about 30k, you're going slightly up on a real small, narrow road. You got the cliff on one side, the stream on the other, and you're fighting for 30k just to get to the start of the climb. And then when you hit the climb, ever, uh, Sonia Duvall was setting tempo with David Miller and a couple other guys. Really good tempo the whole way up. Exploded, brought us down to 20, 25 guys going over the top of that. <laughs> and as always, they sat up. Another 25 guys get back on. Then some craziness happening back in the cars. I was going back to try to get bottles, and as soon as I went back to go get bottles for Cadell and myself, they pulled the caravan back away, which was uh, normally just never happens. Maybe there was another group coming from behind. They didn't want them to latch on, but at some particular point in time, you got to feed the riders in the front too. So I go back there about halfway down the hill when the cars finally got on, grab some bottles, then they pull the caravan away. So then I'm chasing for like 2K on my oh, own to get back on. Good. Get back on. Yeah get up to Cadell, give him a couple bottles, drink a couple bottles myself, then go back to the car again, because Cadell drank both his, I drank both mine, go back to the car, get some more bottles, come back up to Cadell, and then ride in the wind and the crosswind sections out in the wind for him, and then take him straight up to the front and to the right on the Rasmussen's wheel for the start of the climb. Do 2-3K with the front group until I start feeling I'm in the red, and then I figure my job's about done there and better save it for the next day. So then it's just tempo up and over. But that was a hard day for me yesterday, and if, if you guys watching the race, who the fans watching the race know it was a hard day for Cadell. You got uh, that thing with the with the caravan and the commissaires. Is that another example of the commissaires cracking down a bit this year? I, that was just playing out ridiculous what they did yesterday. I've never witnessed it in all my career to go back there and get bottles and then have them pull the cars away. I'm sure maybe they're looking at, there's different views. From a rider's point of view, you're seeing as the caravan's there, why are they moving it? But maybe, not thinking straight, there's a group behind that's just about ready to get on and they want to pull the cars away so that they can't get on. But at the same time, the front group is sitting up so that they can get the cars there and get bottles. So they know the front group is sitting up. Anyone, any of the care, the official that's f the first car in the caravan can see the front group is sitting up getting bottles. I mean, Rabobank's back there, I'm back there, Discovery's back there, every team's back there getting bottles. So you know we're not racing at the front. So if they're coming from the back anyways, they're going to get on. So don't pull the caravan away. It doesn't make any sense. And they've been doing a bunch of stuff like that throughout the tour. They did it with Vino where they pulled the caravan away for Vino, but they didn't pull it away for Robbie. And so they, the officials themselves have been doing a lot of things that have just not been making sense and have been costing people energy. But more importantly, hasn't they, they haven't set a standard, yeah, so you consistent. don't. It's not consistent. You don't know what they're gonna do. So, okay, if I knew they were gonna do that, I'd be prepared for that and and be ready mentally and physically. It, well, maybe physically you can't change anything, but at least mentally prepared that they're gonna pull the caravan away. But when you're not thinking that way and you're already stressed, you're going down a crazy descent. You're getting bottles through corners at 50k an hour and 80k an hour descents on the straights and stuff. And guys, you know, handing bottles, you got them out of your pockets, and all of a sudden you look forward and the the field is you know 500 meters up the road or something. You know, <laughs> you're like, wow, this is crazy. And so of course you're upset and stuff because it's. That's what sports is. It's all about the emotions, right? <laughs> a little drama. Yeah, a little drama. So more, more. I would just prefer you just just a standard policy. This sure. is how we're gonna act. Yeah. Hey, uh, Cadell had some words about Sonia Duvall's pace over the Palliers yesterday. Uh, he seemed a little upset with it. So thought it seemed a little ridiculous. And in hindsight, obviously Mayo came off pretty <laughs> early. Well, was that your feelings as well? Was that unnecessary? Wow, maybe Maya was feeling really, really good. I, I know Machine, the director there, Sonia Duvall, of course, because I rode for that team, and he's aggressive. He wants to win every race. 
if, if he thought Maya was riding good, if Maya said, hey, I feel really good at this moment, and, and you can. You can have moments where you feel really good, and then come the last climb, guess what? You just, you know, you're one candy bar or one cliff bar or something like that short on calories, and then, boom, you bonk. Sure. Uh, Maya actually came off before the top of that climb, so he didn't even make it to the last. He made it to the last climb with the front group, of course, but that's because he got back on when we sat up. So you would hope as the writer that he just makes a call and just says, tells the director, no, I don't have it. Let's save the guys, use them for another day. You know, and yeah, there's other possibilities of why they were chasing too, but the only thing that, that would make sense in bike racing uh, up front anyways would be that, that they're chasing for mile. Miles looked good on the climbs, extremely good on the climbs. He's looked good this whole tour all the way to the time trial. So maybe that, that they were hoping that was just one bad day. Yeah. Well, you know, we saw a few days ago in the Alps, uh, Cadell unable to stay with Contador. Uh, in hindsight, it was his, his trying to stick with Rasmus and, and Contador a mistake. It looked like he blew up and, and fell probably further back than if he had raced his own pace the way Levi did. Uh, is that hindsight 2020, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, the downside, the, the other difference would have been if he would have let him go the very first time they attacked, those two would have worked in collaboration right from the get-go. So maybe he lost the minute and the minute and a half, two minutes, whatever it was at that point, but maybe we would have lost three or four. We don't really know because one thing is 100% certain. The only main objective of those two riders was to get rid of Cadell. And as soon as they got rid of Cadell, you saw them, they worked together like they were on the same team. And so if Cadell would have let him go right from the bottom of the climb, those two would have been working together right from the get-go. And no one, was gonna, no one back there was going to work with Cadell, not Sastra, not, not Levi. Levi's going to sit on because he's got Contador up the road. Sastra's going to sit on because he can't out-time trial uh, uh, Cadell either. So he's going to take advantage of that too. So Cadell was basically, he was the whipping boy yesterday. Nobody, everybody wanted to beat him up because he's, he was the only one up there that was the time trial is still left aside from Cloden and Cloden had already been dropped. So the only option he could have did is if he stayed with Cloden and Cloden would have worked with him and those two could have worked together. Maybe, maybe not, but evidently Cloden wasn't going that good. And you see in the spur of the moment, Cadell wants to win the Tour de France, plain and simple. And if you wanted to win the Tour de France, you're going to have to stay with Rasmussen. Yeah. yeah, it's clear there's a lot of pressure on Cadell. Um, to be the first Australian to win the tour and also like you said he can climb he can time trial and he's the only I mean discovery they've got Levi and Contador going into yesterday Astana has Kashechkin and Cloden and Vino well going yeah. into yesterday going into no yesterday. one going into yesterday at the start of yesterday <laughs> stage no one had any doubts whatsoever that Vino was going to throw in some huge attack Everyone was planning. Cologne was up the road. He was going to wait on the second to last climb. Vino's form was back because he just got done blazing everyone in the time trial. He was going to light it up at the bottom of that climb, go across to Cologne, and, it, and he was going to gain five minutes on everyone be wearing the leader's jersey. Everyone would thought that was a possibility for sure, so they had three going into the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, what, what a surprise. I mean, what, what? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was, that was it. You know, when he blew and he came off on the second, the last climb there, everyone was like, really? <laughs> now, rooming with Cadell, what's it like for him? What's the pressure like for him, and how's he handling it? I think he's happy. He's riding better. He's, he's above expectations of the team, so I don't think he's feeling like, you know, after yesterday's stage he's got any more pressure or anything like that because he's, he's, riding, he's riding where he's supposed to be. Last year he was fifth, and now he was supposed to be podium. And so he's in the podium spot. He still has a good shot at second. Granted, Gontador is looking really good, so you don't want to give him any more room. Uh, but it's still doable in the time trial, and, and you know, hopefully uh, with Rasmussen, if he, well, for us anyways, hopefully he has a bad day somewhere. Well, that's going to be my last question for you. Uh, today, Discovery has to go on the offensive. Uh, do you, how do you see it playing out? And, and, and with today and tomorrow, the last two days in the mountains, uh, you know, is Rasmussen going to be able to hang on? Well, the hard thing about the tour is when you get this far into the race, so many guys are so many minutes down that even if you let them go up the road, if they get 20 minutes, they're still 10 or 15 from GC. And so realistically, the only thing that they can do is fight with Levi if they want to risk Levi's spot on GC and really try to put Levi into an early move and put, a, put pressure on Rabobank. But the only thing you can do right now to win the tour is you have to destroy Rabobank's team aside, okay, aside from 
Justin Rasmussen having a bad day, you have to destroy his team before the climbs so that Rasmussen's all by himself, has to start the bottom of the climb by himself, and, and you can attack him left and right. That's, that's the only way it's going to get done. Today, you go over the climb, then you have a descent. So on the, even if you can't get rid of him at the top, if there's five, ten guys with Rasmussen, he's got no teammates, and guys are willing to give up their second and thirds and fourths and fifths on GC, then maybe one guy can get away and, and mix some things up. Yeah. You know, Chris, I probably got another dozen questions for you, and we could stand here all day, but you got a race. It's a big day today. So uh, please keep sending your uh, viewer questions in, TV at InsideInc.com, and uh, maybe once we get out of the Pyrenees and things are a little bit more relaxed, we'll throw a few more of those at you. Yeah, absolutely. Rest day, we can answer a couple. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the time. Thanks, guys.